Hi guys, today we're gonna explain a bit more how we make our grow boxes. So sorry for not posting earlier, we got really busy preparing and shipping our grow kits. But now we're back at talking grow boxes. We received a lot of questions about how to set up the box itself and how the plants should grow in there. And one of the most frequent questions is how do you keep your plants so small? And we're gonna answer that too. Thing is, we never really explain how to build a tiny grow box while still having great results in terms of quality and quantity. In this video, we're gonna focus on the box part and how to set up the lights, the ventilation and the carbon filter. In the next video we'll be talking about the technique that gave us the most weight. Alright, so in short, this video will be about how to get the most out of your grow box, no matter how small it is. The most important part of the setup is, you know, setting up your light. And as you might have noticed, there is more than one way to position your light in your grow box like for example this one is all vertical so we got the light on the sides and on this one that is more traditional we got the lights on top uh, so this is what we're going to see today and explain how we position our lights in the grow box so i guess you all know the classical setup with lights on top in the grow tent for example but, you know, because we're dealing with tiny spaces and furnitures, we had to think about it a bit differently. All this is just about canopy. So, canopy is the outside surface of your plant, where the light hits directly. And because it's the most exposed part of the plant, this is where the buds will develop. So obviously you want your canopy to be as big as possible and that's where putting the lights on top can be a problem when dealing with tiny spaces. And so because most furniture is not square on surface and they're actually quite narrow which is a problem with canopy surface when you have the lights on top. So this is where we just saw it. Okay, lights on top is not good for canopy surface when you're dealing with furniture as a grow box. You end up with a very tiny canopy and remember Canopy surface is bud surface and because it fills the whole space really quickly you end up with very little light penetration for the lower branches. All this will take you to a very little amount of buds which is not good. So how could you take advantage of this surface? By putting the lights on the sides. Depending on the number of panels you have, either one big panel or multiple small panels, you can either do one light on one side and the plant on the other side or lights on both sides and the plant in the middle. As having your lights on the side also has an important side effect. It prevents the plant from stretching to the top of the box because plants want light so they tend to reach toward it. So instead of going up, it will try to go on the side. That's why you'd want a net attached to your pot so you can attach the plant to it. You can force it to thicken and grow a much larger canopy from bottom to top. If you're planning to have a separate vacuum space, don't ask yourself too much questions and just put the lights on top. Because light penetration is not so much of an issue during early veg. When the plant is in veg, you want it to build solid foundation for the future blooming. One thing to consider when you're doing the veg box is the growth speed of the plant because if the light is too strong or too close to the plant it's going to stay very short and compact making nodes very close to each other or if the light is too weak or too far away the plant is going to stretch making very huge gaps between each nodes so when the plant is in veg you will notice how it grows by stages and stages have a certain distance between each other and this is this distance between stages that will tell you if the light is too strong or too weak or too close or too far away. Okay, so once you've seen this, you can, you can experiment with that and the plant reacts quite quickly to light intensity changes. So what you're going to do is check every few days the distance between each step and, and adjust the lamp's power by dimming it up and down. So dimming up means the plant grows shorter 
and dimming down the LED makes the plant grow faster. So the best thing to do is to start with the, the initial sprouting plant quite close to the lamp, like 20 cm, and set the light to around 50 or 80%. The second, so now the other most important part of the job is to set up a good ventilation. This will ensure uh, temperature and humidity control. Ventilation also has an important role when it comes to controlling the smell by adding a carbon filter. That's why you want this type of ventilation when you want to add a carbon filter. Blowers like this are designed to work like a vacuum, while the usual fans are just made to move air. So in the situation where you need to add a carbon filter, the blower will be able to cope with the obstruction made by the carbon filter by doing enough negative pressure to pull through the carbon filter. So we are ready to put the ventilation in place. And all right, so the, the base principle is simple. Hot air goes up. So this is where you would want your blower to suck the air out of the box. You usually want to have the outtake on top and the intake at the bottom. You will also want both intake and outtake to be as far apart as possible. Imagine that the air will go directly from the intake to the outtake in a straight line. And you want this straight line to go through your plant to make sure it's going to move all the air trapped inside the plant. So, because if you put them too close to each other, the air will go directly from the intake to the outtake very fast without actually renewing the air inside the box. And because of that, the, the humidity and temperature is going to get stuck on your plant without actually moving and this is not good. Having an intake fan is not useful in small spaces and it actually, it actually messes up with the airflow so can it can make you know controlling the smell much harder so you don't need it. And also uh, take care of a detail when you're doing the ventilation for a, a something that will be used as a bloom box uh, make sure you have enough, enough space under it to put the, the carbon filter. So now, so, right, so now let's talk about carbon filters and how they work and how we can make one. The carbon filter is mostly used to control the smell of the plant. The basic concept of a carbon filter is quite simple. It's just mostly two parts. So you have little carbon pellets on one side that are trapped in a sealed a container with holes so the air can go through and the other part is the ventilation on top of that that is going to pull through it so the air from the inside of the box has to go through the carbon before going out and this is where the smell goes away so if I get back to the blower installation we talked earlier what you will want to do is place the carbon filter inside the box, in front of the outtake hole, with the blower right above it. So the air is sucked through the carbon filter before reaching the outside of the box. There are multiple solutions to do so. The first that comes to mind is to get a classical carbon filter like for the usual tents. Unfortunately, they are not adapted to small setups. They are quite big and they are actually quite expensive. But the good news is, in tight spaces, you don't need professional grade carbon filters. And because as long as you keep the number of blooming plants low, the problem of smell can be quite easily mitigated. So we're gonna mostly focus on two DIY solutions that you can easily get out there. So the first kind is this kind of boat filters. They, they contain actual carbon pellets and this is really important. You should also make sure that it is filled enough because sometimes uh, they have carbon filters but they don't have enough so it's not dense enough and it's not working. And they often have screw holes here so it's much easier to install. And the other advantage, you can actually stack them because they, they're made up for. The more the plant smells, the more carbon you can stack on top of each other. And another option that works really well, but is a bit more tricky, is to use actual aquarium carbon pellets 
that can be easily found on Amazon or anything like this. In this case, the easiest way is to use something like a PVC tube, seal it on one side with this, close one side with foam or anything like this, then put a few inches of carbon pellets and then one more layer of this and then just glue the blower on top of it so it just sucks through it. So as you can see there's not so much to get right and it's basically remembering some few key points. If it's just for early vaguing spaces just put the light on top. If it's for bloom or full cycle place the LED panel on the side. Outtake is always done with a blower placed on top. Intake can be passive but always at the bottom uh, and carbon filter is not used during veg. Alright, so that's all for this video. Now we're ready to put our seeds to sprout and that's for the next video. Mm -hmm.